Test match rugby, folks. Springboks taking on Wales from Twickenham. I've just watched this one overnight here in New Zealand. It is now three o'clock in the morning as the rain is pouring down here in Auckland. But hey, two pretty different halves of rugby. Uh, very close at halftime. No scoring for Wales in the second half. Try on debut. Man of the match for Edward van der Boven. Not a bad shift. Some new combinations. Uh, maybe not quite settled in yet, which is to be expected. And a very busy TMO, but uh, yeah, we'll go through some of the key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on the game. Um, I mean, ultimately, Wales will be pretty disappointed that their second half brought them a whole lot of nothing. South Africa, I feel like, will be, like, if you'd said 41-13 before the start of the game, you would have said that probably sounds about right. Maybe a bunch of World Cup winners against the very inexperienced Welsh side, but I feel like given the amount of errors in this game and the new combinations like i mentioned um there'll certainly still be a lot of work-ons for the box before the irish series i mean it started with a few jitters from new man uh hendricks are at 10 missed a bit of a sitter from the tee early so maybe a few nerves as he kind of shanked a penalty wide but it didn't matter because they scored a try a minute later basically from the restart Rus. With a big carry, wide ball, a pretty simple 1-2 for Jesse Creel and Mpimpi to go through. So, 7 points to nil, no problems with the conversion. And, uh, yeah, healthy start, seeing as they've just missed the penalty. But, to be fair, Wales did get 3 points back in reply. Mostert got pinged for not rolling at the breakdown. And Costello was able to slot 3 points. And that all started from Faf uh, putting out a kick on the full. So, kind of an error punished by the Welsh boys. Uh, but then the first scrum... First scrum and Vincent Koch uh, in his 50th cap looked up for it to be getting that start. Uh, he wins a penalty. That leads to a big line break from uh, Rus once again. He really clocked up some run meters and then uh, Dyer gets yellow carded for Wales for a kind of cynical offside. So um, yeah, proper field position for the South Africans. Can they punish? Yes, they will. I mean, it takes a wee while. They've got a five-meter scrum. They get advantage from the scrum. They tap it. They go through some phases. They get advantage from the phases. They go for a touch. Mall time, and the mall leads to a penalty try. And uh, Wainwright coming in at the side sees him go to the bin as well. So you got two Welsh players in the bin. It's 14-3, and it's looking like this could be 50, 60, 70 points if it goes at this rate. But... I mean, Wales would be pretty satisfied that the, the yellow card period, the double yellow card period, doesn't really have much doing. The South Africa will be disappointed. I mean, if anything, um, Wales had a chance to take a shot at goal when uh, Quokka Smith got pinged for not rolling. But uh, another kind of missed kick early, cost low that one. Um, yeah, it meant that Wales didn't get, get anything from it. But there were some knock-ons. There were some scrums. Dyer comes back on. His yellow card's over. Uh, Hendricks has a pass intercepted by Liam Williams, which was almost a try in itself. Uh, then Wainwright's coming back on too, so no damage done during the yellow card. You would have thought, given the speed of the first two tries from South Africa with two extra players, they would have punished, but doesn't really work out that way. Then there's a turn for South Africa to get a yellow card when uh, Fussy gets yellow carded for taking a high ball, which he did pretty well all evening, but... Then he kind of clocks Plumtree with his boot on Plumtree's shoulder. Now, I've seen a few of these over the years. They're not really that common. But the guys who are going for the high balls, someone is standing near their kind of landing zone. And whether it's just a balancing thing, whether it's an instinctual defensive maneuver, or whether you're legit trying to kick somebody, if you ask 100 different rugby fans, you'll get probably a third of each answer. But... The uh, the referee rules that it's foul play, and even in the officiating team, you hear one of the TMO, it's not a TMO, uh, one of the linesmen saying he didn't think it was an unnatural motion, but the ref disagrees. So even with the officials, we get the disagreement. Um, so yeah, it goes off, it goes off for a yellow card. So really a hard one to, hard one for you and I to sit here and decide what Fussy's intent was with that one. But either way, he hits uh, he hits Plumtree with the boot, so it's a yellow card. Can Wales punish? Yes, they can. It's a little bit fluky because they go for a line-out. Uh, they offer touch. It's a good touch finder. They got a line-out right deep in South African territory. Uh, South Africa kind of steal the line-out, but because the ball pops loose, Dewey Lakes is able to gather it and go over for a try. So the one Welsh try is not... It's not one that they kind of constructed. It's more of an opportunist one, which 
you you would have liked the try, which was maybe a nice set play or you know a good bit of phases, a bit of territory uh, pressure building, and then you crack the defense. But you take what you get in the sport. So fourteen points to ten, and then uh, Hendricks's restart out on the full. So maybe the jit is still with him late on in the first half. Um, then South Africa get penalty conceded at the mall. Wales up for a three. So fourteen three. Hendricks that even slips over before halftime, like even and offloads it forward. Like even the turf was kind of against them in that first half. Uh, Ox and Che even got pinged for not scrummaging straight on. So yeah, the end of the half didn't go that well for the box and was certainly really encouraging for Wales. Like after having that disastrous start, two yellow cards, two tries um, conceded, they're only a point down. And like you look at the stats, run meters are 234 to 107 to the box. Possession is 57, sorry, 51-49. Territory is 54-46 to the box. Clean breaks is 4-1. to one to the box so on paper the box should probably be ahead by more than a point but the turnovers conceded nine to five so almost double for south africa so that's what i mean about some new combinations and just a few errors that i don't think you'll see as the teams kind of play more games so yeah penalty conceded as uh penalties conceded as seven apiece which is a little bit uh kind of on the high side second half uh, South Africa look to catch Wales on that left wing again, and they do. Uh, maybe there'll be a bit of contention about whether the pass from Creel to Mapimpi was forward, whether it was, because it certainly travelled forward, but the question is, was it forward out of the hands or not? The commentary team I had certainly thought so. It's one that if it'd been called back, I don't think you'd have too many complaints, but the uh, the TMO says it's fine. So Mpimpi gets a try. Good to see him back over the whitewash and uh, 21 points to 13. Certainly a lot more comfortable for South Africa and more comfortable, I think, certainly Hendricks in the second half. Now, he gets subbed relatively early in the second half, but he certainly looked better. I mean, 49 minutes, he slots a long-distance penalty with a bit of angle. 24 points to 13. No more jitters about his kicking game. And then the TMO comes into things, and he does it a couple of times. Now... If the TMO is going to stop the game and uh, get us to have a look at some foul play, man, there better be a smoking gun. It better be nigh on murder. I say that with a little bit of exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Better be something so blatant, so terrible. <sighs> but nothing really comes of it, barring a debatable kind of penalty, because it's uh, it's Carter having a, a, um, a shoulder to the head shot, I guess on Malherba, which does sound bad. That's the kind of thing that gets red carded these days. But Malherba's got such a huge dip. And I don't think Carter was coming at him high. So, yeah, they rule that there's there's enough foul play for a penalty, apparently. But nothing more than that. Now, I don't really want to see the game stopped for just a penalty. Now, they obviously have to go through the process. I'd be kind of screaming blue murder if they missed this kind of thing. But you know what I mean. It's, it's a lot of stoppage for, for, for not a heck of a lot. So either way, um, yeah, it's a, it's a penalty only after a bit of debate from the officials in that one. I think some of the officials thought not even a penalty, to be fair. Um, Hendricks's touch finder is uh, gold from that resulting penalty. They go very close to the line, but uh, Wales' defense is able to hold Thomas with a nice tackle on Ivan Rus, and I think that's Hendricks's kind of last action, but he certainly came into the game more as time went on. Uh, Wainwright also had a nice defensive play on Quokka Smith later on. Uh, Wales get held up a bit later on, so it's not like they're out of the game, not like they didn't have chances in the second half, but when South Africa concede a penalty at one point in the second half, it's Peter Seftutoy at the breakdown, kind of a soft one. Like, Wales' touch finder just dead. You can't be doing that. You're already down 24 points to 13. You've been held up not long before. It's kind of a, a schoolboy era to make that one. You can't be doing that. But as I said, both sides have been guilty. Like Faf kicked it out on the full. Hendricks uh, reached out on the full. So it's not like either side was perfect in that regard. It felt like that first first test of the season, didn't it? Um, TMO gives us another buzz. Uh, after a long wait, they find the footage for Bongi and Bonambi. Um... There's nothing in it. Not really. They eventually give a penalty, but I'm just like, man, both players are really low. Come on, are we really stopping the game for this? It's one, two in the morning for me. I want to be watching some rugby, but anyway, 
Uh, they, they go with the penalty, uh, but Wales aren't able to get anything from it. And then uh, 65 minutes, Feinberg and Gomzulu announces his presence on the test scene with a bloody long shot at goal. Um, and he gets it easily. Easily has the legs. It goes well over the dead ball line. So, uh, yeah, great shot from his own half. Heck of a penalty, 27-13. Keeps the scoreboard ticking over, which it's not done for a wee while. And then the scoreboard kind of really blows out. You get a mall try for Mbanambi. And then you get Van der Merwe, uh, And he's looked like it. Like he beat Dyer for pace earlier on in the game. He's looked like if you give him any space, he's going to be dangerous. And he doesn't even need the space, really, because he's got the steps. But fussy catch and a high ball. They get it to Van der Merwe, Steps through some Welsh defenders. Gas. And he's over. You can see what it means to him, eh? 41 points to 13. That is the final score. So, yeah, kind of a, a rough day at the office for Wales, to be honest, but they weren't given much of a hope against the South African side. Run meters finish 507 to 174. That is lopsided. Possession 5347. Uh, Wales actually edged the territory, interestingly enough, but clean breaks 7 to 1 to South Africa. Defenders beaten 21 6 to South Africa. Um, tackled at 94% at the box, so they kept the Welsh attack really quiet from what limited uh, defending they had to do. Wales were 85, which is not terrible, but yeah, they still conceded 41 points, so it's kind of hard to, to say much more. Um, turnovers conceded, though, for South Africa, 17-9. 17 turnovers conceded for South Africa is higher than they will be used to. Yeah, uh, if they had had fewer of those... I think the scoreline would have been even higher. Uh, individuals, Carter had 16 from 16 tackles for Wales. Lake beat three defenders of the six that Wales got. So he'd be good for it. Uh, Wainwright had 38 metres uh, for the South Africans. Fassi obviously took those high balls really well. One he got in trouble for with the yellow card, but overall looks solid enough. Rusk clocked up those run metres, especially with their early line break, beat a couple of defenders. Mostert and Peter Steff had 11 from 11 tackles each. Van der Merwe, 71 metres, two clean breaks, four defenders beaten, and a try. We will see the box taken on Ireland soon enough, and uh, Australia await Wales. You guys let us know your thoughts on the game. Like I said, I think both sides will be looking to increase performance levels going forward, but certainly a pretty solid day at the office from the box, and... Uh, yeah, improvement from Wales still on the cards. You guys listen to your thoughts and um, talk to you guys again soon. See you later.